What is up, alien army? I am Oculus, the alien next door, purveyor of esoteric lore. So, today's esoteric chit chat is going to be some random ramblings, uh, just some things that I recently channeled. And so, in another video of mine, the most recent video that I filmed, I actually uh, explored different types of relationships, okay? I explored uh, a little tidbit of a soulmate relationship, of a karmic relationship, and a twin flame relationship, okay? So if you want to check out that video, um, it just it's pretty self-explanatory in the title. Uh, that one I touched on it a little bit, but I was like, you know what? Something compels me to channel a little bit more information on these. So with the soulmate relationship, um, this is some relationship that you might have. It can be with anybody. It can be someone who you feel an immediate kinship with and you tend to get along very, very well with this person. And this is because you are essentially part of the same soul family that chose to incarnate on this earth at this point of time. And in a previous life, a soulmate of yours may have been your brother or your sister or a parent or a grandparent, right? They could have been your best friend in another lifetime and you enjoyed each other's company so much that you chose to meet up again uh, in this time-space reality that we're conscious of. So uh, someone from a past life may be a sibling that you really got along with and now that same soul is coming in to meet you and now they are your child, okay? That's just an example. So it's it, they tend to be people who enjoyed each other's company and then they just want to experience their physical bodies with each other. You know, it can be a lover, it can be um, a pet. There's really no limit to a soul mate relationship because you are the same soul group, you are the same soul family and you, you get along like that, okay? So something also uh, that I should say about a soulmate relationship, they're kind of like a BFF. Um, even if you don't consider them to be your best, best, bestest friend, they will be someone who you can share your own personal inside jokes with and you kind of have your own unique language, your own unique understanding of each other, yada, 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 right? Okay, so we like soulmates. Soulmates are a happy place for us, okay? A karmic relationship, uh, this is pretty much meant for two souls, two, did I say tool? Two souls to work together in this lifetime to carry out a lesson or experience that each of them chose to experience. So uh, there is going to be kind of a difficulty in your relationships uh, with them. It might be someone who is uh, for you to consider them to be very, very toxic, okay? They also might consider you to be very, very toxic because remember, relationships are like mirrors. It's like a two-way street. So what you see in another are also potential possibilities of traits that you have within yourself, okay? So this is going to be very intense. Uh, it does not matter the type of energy, okay, a karmic relationship can be between a parent and a child, it can be between relatives, it can be between co-workers, it can also obviously be between friends and lovers, okay, so um, anything but an animal, okay, it, a karmic relationship is not going to be in the form of a pet, okay, because uh, in this lifetime, animals, even though they do have souls, they do not have that conscious awareness the way someone in a human suit does. So they would not be able to, in their a pet body, they would not be able to really comprehend what a karmic relationship is, okay? So that's kind of just touching on that very, very briefly. That's why it won't be a pet. Um, but, you know, a lot of people do have strong bonds with their pets, so pets can very well be soulmates, but they will not be a karmic and they will not be a twin flame, okay? You don't want to make love with your pet. I mean, you know, maybe they're the closest being to you right now, but you definitely don't want to do that. So, anyway, um, a karmic relationship is something that you experienced here that you do not wish to experience again, okay? And this is not a third dimensional view of karma. 
because karma, when people talk about, oh, they got their karma real good or, or whatever that is, it's a very third dimensional perspective on it, okay? It's very bitter, it's somewhat vengeful, and it's very spiteful in nature, okay? Karmic is something that it might have felt shitty while it was occurring, but you realize that it's for a higher purpose and it's not something like where what goes around comes around it's something that um it's more of a macrocosmic view than a microcosmic view okay if that makes sense at all um i was compelled to say that i feel someone is gonna just have a light bulb moment where they understand it with that so it's something that happens that might feel shitty and you will not want to experience that ever again but because of that it's going to cause immense soul growth okay so um it is sort of karmic because in your previous life you uh well maybe not in your previous life whenever your souls were connected this could be when you were in the ethers only and neither of you had a physical body that you agreed to incarnate on this earth because you you and that soul chose each other for whatever reason okay and they you might have made an agreement to you know you might have shook their hand and be like okay well you know i know it's gonna be shitty when i run into you on in the third dimensional uh plane but you know i want to learn this and then the other individual is like yeah me too i got you i got the other person um the other individual is going to be feeling the same about you, okay? So if you think that a lot of relation uh, relations with this person were very um, malefic, okay? Odds are they are thinking that about you because the two of you have to learn something from each other in order for your soul to grow and expand, okay? You chose to evolve because... Uh, without that uh, particular lesson, your soul might have been stuck at a certain level where you knew that you wanted to surpass that level in this physical body. So um, this can uh, this can be a very difficult pill to swallow, the difficult people even in your life, okay? Um, and mostly everyone from what I've observed and seen or experienced, everyone has that one individual who was just so difficult and they vowed. I will not be like that. I will never be like that person. I will never put myself in a situation like that. I will not, like, I just, no. I want to wipe my hands of that whole thing, okay? So, a karmic relationship is someone who feels like that. But at the same time, you have evolved because you realize what you don't want. So now you step forth into a higher state of being, knowing more of what you do want because you, you know more of what you don't want, okay? And with a karmic relationship, uh, this is something just conveyed to me now. It will be uh, karmic for you, okay? And the, the pawns... That sounds a little derogatory when I say it, but I'm not saying it to demean any type of individual. I'm saying a pawn as in like a chess piece, okay? Because you're moving the pawn around, but it really can't go that far, okay? Um, it can't make fancy moves. It can't really, it just kind of has to go straight forward, okay? And the only way that it can capture something is to move sideways, right? Away from what it knows. So this is why I'm saying pawns because they're going to be pawns that come in your way and they're blocking your path, right? Because you're here, the other pawn is there. So you are also in essence a pawn to that individual who's a pawn to you. So you're facing each other and you can't move because the two of you, you're, you're still in, in the essence of that energy, that lesson that you wanted to learn. So you're going to remain stuck there until you break out of it and move to the side, okay? And diagonally, okay? So that's kind of what a pattern will look like. It will look like um, different characters that come in as pawns and if you see them for what they are then you become essentially the queen of the chessboard okay you become able to go wherever you want do whatever you do uh, make fancy moves all of that type of place okay that was a very interesting analogy that I chose but I feel like it's very suiting okay like chess pieces are sort of like karmic relationships so until you step out of that cycle they're going to keep uh, repeating over and over again and you have so many pawns right across your chessboard they're the most pl plentiful uh, piece on the game board but how far can they move right so there might be many 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 individuals that are not taking you far and until you realize 
that they are actually a lesson and they are a pawn for you and you're a pawn for them, you're not going to be able to fully wear your crown, okay? And you're going to be stuck in one place. So a karmic relationship tends to have a lot of repetitive patterns as well. If you don't pick up on what the energy is the first time, it's going to reappear in someone else, okay? This, what, this is why someone can have many, many, many karmic relationships with others, okay? Or even if it's not the exact same situation, let's say, for example, someone grew up in a household where whoever was their uh, caretaker or guardian was uh, very emotionally distant, okay? They just weren't um, touchy-feely, they never said I love you, they were just kind of cold and indifferent, right? Um, you might attract that same type of energy that you, and let's say we're using this as a negative example, let's say you needed more nurturing and more affection, right? So you didn't like that, but yet because you didn't learn the karmic lesson, you might actually now attract a partner who is cold and indifferent to you, okay, and not affectionate. So the pattern will repeat itself, and it can repeat itself in many types of relationships. It doesn't necessarily have to be a love interest relationship, okay? So that's kind of all I want to say about karmic relationships. Um, we're going to move on to Twin Flame, and this one is going to be really, really interesting because I channeled so much information, and... I need a deep breath before we get into that. So, so this is going to be somewhat of a fated um, encounter. This is going to be someone who you actually feel that you were destined to meet in this lifetime. You might have had a chance meeting with this person or you might have lived across the street from this person the whole time and you were not aware of it. Okay, This is going to be someone who is going to come forth in a physical body that is attractive to you and that you are going to want to develop feelings for this person in a romantic sexual sense and they are going to want to uh, reciprocate that, okay? So a twin flame to my understanding is not someone who is going to come in as your grandma. You know, like that's just not gonna happen with a twin flame because the objective of the twin flames when they incarnate every time into physical bodies is so that they can find each other and uh, unify, okay, what they are actually in the ethers. And coming as someone who uh, piques your interest, okay, in every uh, aspect of that word in this third dimensional reality now, okay? They're going to come in like that. Now, a misconception about twin flames because I... Just my personal opinion, okay? So whatever your view is, if you don't resonate with this, then that's totally fine. Obviously, listen to what speaks to your soul, but um, I do have to say that twin flames are not all that they are portrayed to be with that lovey-dovey relationship type of energy, okay? They're someone who is going to be very, very difficult, okay? There might be a lot of love and romance and passion in that relation with them, okay? But uh, because the two souls, until they are actually even, when they both have completed all of their lessons that they chose to learn in this lifetime, they are not going to be balanced in essence to unify again, okay? So um, an example is, let's say the twin flames are in the ethers, they're chilling, and then one says, okay, you know what? Let's try to meet up again in our physical bodies, and I'm going to go through five lessons before I'm ready to be with you. And then the other one's like, okay, you know, I'm going to go through five lessons too. And there are going to be different lessons for each of the partners, but what's going to happen is one may accelerate faster than the other one, okay? And this is where that separation comes, where that runner-chaser dynamic uh, comes into play, because one can excel at all of their lessons and be ready to unify with that person with their twin but that individual might be on their lesson one or their lesson two and uh, they might have great love for you and passion and desire and they might want to be with you but something will come in the way that will uh, cause distance between you okay so this can be Anything that you can imagine that would cause distance between people that are not ready to be together, okay? Not that they're not meant to be together, okay? There is a difference between being meant to be with someone and being ready to be with someone. That is a very, very big difference. So, I really would suggest... Um, 
on your own contemplation, inner standing, that that's something to maybe think about, okay? Especially if you are on your quest for a twin flame or if you feel some sort of um, intention about someone you're with now that they might be a twin flame, they might not. Whatever uh, you're resonating with, I feel that um, asking yourself is someone meant for me and is someone ready for me, okay? And you will notice the difference. You'll notice your own kind of take on that. So this separation occurs when the twins meet before they are both ready to unify, okay? So if they meet before their union is uh, meant to go on, one or both will not be ready and therefore it's going to cause hell to break loose or at least it'll feel like it, okay? So, so when I see the twin flame relationship being romanticized, um, that's great, okay? Because it can happen, right? But essentially, even if that does happen, there are going to be some prior occurrences that might try to separate the two, okay? So, uh, dependent upon uh, how each uh, individual soul of the twin flame advances on their own, even though they are connected, they are still individual souls, but uh, the individual soul, if they complete all of their lessons and the two of them, uh, let's say there was someone who's a twin flame five years go by and it was intense and it was great, there was a separation and then let's say for example you were the one who was um, the runner, okay? You were the runner and this person was chasing you and you did not want to be with them because you knew that you weren't ready for it so they would like creep in and you would like creep out to the side, you know? So if you were the runner, let's say five years passes and uh, you, you've been in separation with that person and you, since you were the runner, you're not going to really uh, know consciously at this point. You might know subconsciously that they're your twin flame, but consciously you might not have the awareness of it especially if you haven't learned your individual soul lessons. So if five years passes and then let's say you are in a really, really crazy relationship, okay, whatever, use your imagination because crazy could get cray cray, you know. So you're in a crazy dysfunctional relationship and then finally that's your final lesson to complete, that's your final task and you're like, you know what, I'm done, I don't want to deal with that and you, you choose not to deal with a situation like that ever again. Now all of that energy uh, from the lessons that you wanted to learn and chose to learn here in this lifetime, they become integrated into you, okay? So now you are ready, you've passed the fifth lesson and your twin maybe had uh, passed the fifth lesson five years ago when you guys separated, but now something just clicks in your mind. You're like, you know what? I'm going to give that person a call, right? And it might have been torture for the chaser twin, right? Waiting for you or wondering if you were really their twin flame, even though they knew it all along. Maybe they start to doubt themselves. It might have been torture for them, okay? Or vice versa, okay? Because you might have been the chaser and you might have been dealing with a runner type of um, energy, okay, with your twin. So, now let's say you were the runner and you come back and then the other person you might have uh you know the the wherewithal to realize and tell them and make it up to them or whatever the case right and now this uh this twin has the choice to accept you back in their life or not okay it really depends um on how ready the two of you are because sometimes uh when someone is bitter or scorned that is the ego mind taking over. So even if they know someone is their twin flame, they might not choose to re reunite with them. They might not choose to reunite with them here in this physical realm because their ego mind kind of uh, got the better of them. And now they're like, you know what? I just, I'm going to walk away, right? Um, and so that sometimes does happen. So with twin flames, it can go any which way, okay? Two souls can unite and they might have only chosen one lesson to go through prior to their meeting and they might have let's say experienced things in their very young years both of them sort of a similar situation and then both of them they have evolved okay and they are both ready early in their journey here in this physical body they kind of realized what they want and what they don't want and then the two of them just have a synchronistic meeting and they're together happily ever after and then they 
uh, you know, they can choose not to incarnate on earth in physical bodies anymore, okay? Because they've rectified, they found each other, they're living the life of their dreams here and now together as what they wanted. So it really depends on the individuals, okay? So you can really find out where you're at in your journey by accessing the Akashic Records and uh, deep meditation and things like that. Um, if you want to explore deeper into, let's say you are in the search for that twin flame, then you can explore that, okay? Um, and sometimes a soulmate actually ends up becoming a life partner or the ultimate lover for someone who walked away from their twin flame or something occurred and they just, they're not going to be with their twin flame in this lifetime. Don't think that you can only be with your twin flame and be happy, okay? You can be very, very satisfied and fulfilled with someone else who is not your twin flame. So, um, I kind of have a very logical approach to twin flames, I feel like. Um, of course, it's like metaphysics and channeling, so how logical can that be? But I just, I have not bought into someone who is overly, overly romanticizing something of that nature, okay? Because the twin flame essentially at the end of the day, it is just a title, if I, it is just a label. So anyone in a relationship can be your perfect partner here in this physical realm. But twin flame energy, as I said, 75% of the time, it is a long and difficult journey, okay? But that is somewhat of the magic of what makes a twin flame relationship a twin flame relationship. So now I'm going to give Brief examples of what in my view would be uh, something in pop culture that you can kind of uh, get a better idea of each of the type of relationships I'm talking about, okay? So the first one we talked about was a soulmate type of relationship and this one, um, and I'm gonna try to use examples that many of you might know what I'm talking about, so uh, forgive me if you don't know what I'm talking about, but I feel like this is my best way to describe it, okay? So uh, I'm going to use three different movies, and if you have never seen the movie or you have no interest in seeing the movie, but you do have sort of an interest in the relationship dynamic, then I mean, you could just do a brief like search, like a small synopsis of what the movie entails, okay? So um, that's obviously optional, but here we go. So the first one that we talked about was soulmate, and for a soulmate relationship, I... Uh, I feel in my view that the dynamic of two people um, in a soulmate type of connection is uh, the notebook, okay? So what are the... I saw that movie and I... Number one, I didn't really have much of like an interest to see it, but it was so hyped up. Um, so I remember I watched it and I was just like, oh, okay. And I kind of formulated my opinions and whatever on that. So it was an interesting movie. It was a cute little love story, okay? And the dynamic between them, you kind of get that vibe that they always were longing for each other and they were kind of meant to be together and they had such a good compatibility connection. So... For me, that is what a soulmate type is, okay? Because a soulmate type of relationship, when they're romantically involved, it would be like that, okay? You feel like you're part of the same cloth, like you're cut from the same cloth, right? You kind of get along and one is kind of yin, one is kind of yang, but you mesh well together and you feed off of each other's energies, okay? So that would be my example of a soulmate relationship. Um, my example of a karmic relationship is another one. Uh, this movie is, uh, I, again, I guess fairly popular. Um, in Legally Blonde, again, uh, what I don't remember her name, Reese Witherspoon's character and that guy, I don't even know who he is, but their dynamic in that movie, okay? This is what I would call a karmic relationship for just the fact that she... Uh, was in love with this guy, right? Or so she thought. And then whatever happens, he doesn't think she uh, is the proper fit for him. And so she goes to Harvard Law School to try to uh, get him to notice her and get him to notice her for attributes that she thinks that he wants in his uh, partner. So then what happens with that is he's with another girl and she is upset about it, but she kind of 
is still entertaining the idea like well maybe I could win, win him over or whatever whatever and then she goes through all this she kind of uh, finds out that she finds a piece of herself, okay, so she actually can be a good lawyer, and then she meets the new guy, and, you know, he he actually believes in her, uh, you know, he believed in her right from the beginning, whereas her ex-boyfriend was just kind of brushing her off, like, no, and then at the end, she wins the case, and uh, basically, she, um, the ex-boyfriend kind of comes back into the, you know, he, I mean, he was always kind of there, but he kind of steps forward and is like, you know what, I want to be with you, or whatever that line he drops in that movie. It was like a really funny line that made me laugh when I saw it, but anyway, um, so she's like, what? No, like, because she kind of realizes that she was uh, his equal the whole time, but he was actually um, not seeing her as an equal. Like, he kind of was viewing her with his egotistical point of view, and, you know, she kind of learned a karmic lesson with that. Well, you know, someone uh, thinks I'm not good enough, so I have to prove it to them, but she never had to prove it uh, at all. So it was kind of like a lesson learned, and she also found a piece of herself that she did not know was missing, which she was meant to be a good lawyer, and it actually works out in the end where she ends up being with this new person who uh, was kind of supporting her the whole time that he knew her, okay? So that would be my example of a karmic relationship because it's just, uh, you know, I'm sure on the the ex-boyfriend side, uh, his lesson, although we don't really know his point of view in the story, but his lesson would be, well, you know, I should appreciate someone when I have them because I might never have them again. So um, either way, both sides, I feel like that's a very, very good example for a karmic relationship. A twin flame relationship. Now, uh, this movie, it is, it, it's less, I think, less commonly watched than the, the previous two, but this is Vanilla Sky, and this, to me, is the ultimate epitome of a twin flame relationship, okay, with, um, I, see, I don't remember these characters' names in the movie, but with Tom Cruise and Penelope Cruise, okay, so the two of them uh, kind of meet and uh, they, they really feel this vibe and connection. They meet kind of randomly. It's kind of faded, right, because of Penelope Cruise's character, I think kind of uh, was a semi-love interest for Tom Cruise's friend in the movie. It was such a long time ago since I saw that, so don't quote me on anything, but it was kind of like Tom Cruise came in this faded meeting, and she was kind of there with his friend, but then uh, they hit it off, right? Um, Tom Cruise and Penelope Cruise are characters, and so they kind of uh, felt this deep connection, like that soul connection, that true twin flame, other half of my soul type of connection. Um, and uh, so th th this is totally my observation of the movie, okay? So if you got different things out of it, then use that. But um, the twin flame aspect comes into effect because Penelope Cruz, her character in that movie, is ready for Tom Cruise, right? She's ready to incarnate for whatever reason. Again, we don't know her side, really, her backstory. We just know kind of his. And he clearly is not because he actually gets in the car with Cameron Diaz's character. So that kind of causes their separation, right? Because if he had never gotten in the car with Cameron Diaz, then he would not have uh, had to wear that mask and like all of that. I don't even really remember exactly what went on, but none of that would have happened, right? But he wasn't ready. So he was like, oh, okay, you know, let me go for someone who he wasn't really, he didn't have that twin flame connection with, right? So uh, she gets upset, Penelope Cruz, and Basically, if you've seen that movie, um, you you know what I'm talking about. That all it, it's a very it's a very delicate movie to kind of explain what it is about the the genre even because I'm not even sure. I, I'd say maybe an intellectual love story. I don't know. That's what I'm calling it. That's like why I enjoyed the movie because there's something. It wasn't romantic or lovey dovey really. I mean, there were bits and pieces of it, but it was more like it made you think. So anyway, so at the end end scene where he finds out that he, he's really been lucid dreaming the whole time and he's really 
frozen in a cryogenics lab or whatever it is, um, he goes and um, the ending scene was what really kind of tells me that's twin flame um, is because he says, you know, I, I'll see you in another life when we're both cats. And that, hands down, is the most phenomenal line to, I think, ever be said in a movie. I mean, it's definitely in the top five. Like, oh, shit! Like, when we are both cats. Like, wow. So, anyway, that just kind of uh, intertwines it with that whole twin flame energy, right? Because she's saying that she'll find him in another life. Like, she knew all along that he was her twin flame and he just didn't know, but then he realized it after he's, like, frozen, right? So there's kind of, like, poetic uh, undertones in there. I don't know, but anyway, it, it's a pretty deep movie. You have to really, like, pay attention uh, if you do want to watch it, okay? Um, but when they say that whole thing about another life, then I'm like, oh, wow. So, you know, it is that kind of twin flame relationship, and that's just... Really, those are kind of brief examples of what I would call twin flame uh, type of energy. So, so that was kind of just uh, really brief examples of uh, what I find to be a, a good um, blueprint, I guess, of what each of those relationships means, at least to what is conveyed to me. Okay, so soulmic, karmic, twin flame. Um, that's really it for this video. Um, I just felt like I wanted to clarify, get a little bit more in depth with these type of relationships because in my videos of my tarot readings and things like that, when I'm using the word soulmate or karmic or twin flame, then that is essentially what I mean. So I want whoever is going to receive messages from my videos to get a better resonance of what I'm saying. and if it doesn't agree in your soul and in your psyche, then definitely follow your own beliefs. You know, I'm not the authority on it. This is just my perspective of it um, from experiences and observations and channeling and uh, things like that, okay? So that is it for this video. I hope that uh, whoever is meant to receive messages from this video did in fact receive them. That is always my intention with making videos, I am Oculus, the alien next door, purveyor of esoteric lore. And with that, we're going to say peace, good vibes, and namaste. Stay blessed because you are.